you've just landed inside Launch Street, the innovation podcast, where we interview top innovators out there shaking things up so you can innovate and differentiate and get further faster in this crazy cluttered world. And now, innovation thought leader and your super fly host, Tamara Kleinberg. here with the founder of KeySmart, Mike Tunney. Mike, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I love your invention. It is in my purse, so I'm excited to dig in and to talk to you about it and kind of share the wealth of knowledge that, that you bring to um, all the listeners out there. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's the usual response we get. <laughs> <laughs> you're used to it. You're, you're mm-hmm. old habit this now. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you have this killer invention called KeySmart, and it's a key organizer. Is that how you like to describe it? Tell us a little bit about it, just to kind of get us started and grounded. Yeah, it's been called a few things. We usually go with uh, a minimalist key organizer. I like it. We're going to talk about the minimalist thing a little bit later, too, because that intrigues me from a design perspective. Yep. Uh, But let's back up, and let's talk about what was your aha moment that led to the idea for KeySmart? So the aha moment, I used to live in the city, and I would always have to carry my keys out, obviously, when I went out at night. Um, no matter which, I, I would look for the smallest possible key ring, and even if I just took my you know, my front door and my apartment door, I put a little key ring on it, and it doesn't matter. It'd still make a little bulge in your pocket and, and stab your thigh when you sat down. Yeah. So it's the way it works is you know, your keys go one way, the ring goes the other way. No matter which way you look at it, it's going to be about an inch thick. So I thought it was a very, from coming from a design background, it, I thought it was a very poor design. I decided to take a crack at a solution to it. And I was actually out one night, and I noticed that everyone at the table, when, when you sit down, you basically take your cell phone out and you take your keys out, just be, or at least guys do. Because when you sit down, they stab your thigh, and it gets really annoying. So I saw the common problem that everyone has, that everyone... You know, bulky keys is kind of like a necessary nuisance, mm-hmm. you know, to most people. So no one's really ever taken a crack at solving that problem. So I decided to take a crack at it and came up with KeySmart and launched on Kickstarter in 2013. Wow. So actually not that long ago when you think about it. Oh. I want to go back to what you said, though, because I think that observation equals leads to ideas. Observations mm-hmm. always lead to ideas. And we're not normally as observant as we could be. And the problems are kind of everywhere for us to solve. So I think it's really cool that you... We're kind of just watching everybody and noticing like, hey, people mm-hmm. are just putting their keys and their and their phones out on the table. There's a problem here. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what, I think that's really cool. I think a lot. So if you're listening out there, I want you to think about how can you observe a little bit better because there's probably problems that need to be solved mm-hmm. everywhere. Okay, oh, yeah. so now you've got this idea for this product. Walk us through the journey of kind of that aha moment at the table and, um, you know, observing a problem to where you are today. Steps so, um, so I, my background is actually robotic engineering. So it's you know making this is you know a walk in the park. Well, I was gonna say this is easy <laughs> compared to some of the other stuff you've probably yeah made. exactly. So, um, but I also have a background in machining, you know, work, or, uh, fabricating metal. So what I did was I explored. It took. I mean, it's a very simple design, but it took me two months to you know for A to B is not a straight line. It's a lot of zigzags, right? Right. So I went through I, probably 50 different designs, you know, different egg shapes, long. There was one d- design that I had three posts and four posts and mm-hmm. a credit card sized one to make it slimmer but fatter, like all sorts of stuff. But I wanted to make it very intuitive. I didn't want people to need to make their own, buy their own or buy, you know, special keys for me or I wanted to be able to people to buy it, fits all their existing keys really you know, really simple, and that's and that's it. Um, but I also wanted to make it um, very uh, attractive. So a key is, if you look at the back side of a key, it's very nice. It's very smooth ridges and a flat back side. Then you look at the front side, it's really ugly. It's pretty intimidating. It's all jagged teeth, and, and especially when they're loose, they clank together, and it's just not a very... Um, yeah, it's very... Funky. Yeah, it's very functional, you know, utilitarian design. It's not pretty. So I wanted to, you know, digest all those aspects and create one product. So I started with metal stain, or, or I started with stainless steel, actually. It was a little too heavy. I was, you know, basically grounded down on grinding wheels and machine, you know, spent 
weeks in a machine shop trying to figure out the you know the best possible design that was universal to everything. So after about 50 prototypes later, it's it is what it is today. So I want to dig a little bit into that because you you said a few things that I think are important for up and coming inventors and entrepreneurs. So one is, wow, you spend a lot of time analyzing keys, Mm -hmm. you know, and kind of what's good and bad about them and all the aspects of them. What what do you think that brought to the, to the process of actually delving that being that detailed and that kind of observant about all the elements that you were dealing with? Um, it brought a lot of crazy to my life, (laughs) but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, to analyze such a simple thing to such a minute level, you know, is definitely, it's definitely, it's something I do all the time, but I guess perfectionism. Um, but it definitely, it, it makes you look at the, oh, so many things that people don't normally look at, you know, keys have been around hundreds of years yeah, and yeah. no and one's ever changed. No. Really? Really. So to be able to, to like kind of unpack that and reinvent it definitely took a lot of a lot of stepping back, a lot of, you know, when you stick your nose right into it, it's really hard to see the, all the possibilities. So you got to dive into it, step back, look look where you uh, ended up, and then, you know, dive back in and repeat that over and over. I think that's great advice for up-and-coming inventors. That the idea of don't just brush over the simple and obvious things. Actually take some time to dig into them because I think great innovation comes out of that. You just never know what you're mm-hmm. come up with. So you've got 50 iterations under your belt, right? You get the one that you think is worth at least putting out into the world. What about it made you know it was worth it at that point? Uh, it just it was it was universal. It I actually I tested a lot of them with other people just to you know I gave it to them, saw what they thought of it, didn't tell them anything. Like basically that they just you know similar to like them just buying it at a store, and I would just observe them interact with it. So that's how the different that different hardware came about. Um, there's a million ways I can make it uh, cheaper and you know let more uh, more gimmicky, you know. So, but there's a reason why I spent a lot of time and you know a lot of the hardware on it's very expensive and custom made. So there's a reason for everything in it. Um, it's and to answer your question, why how did I come up with this is. Uh, it's. I showed it to everyone, and I. It got to a point where I just had no more critiques. <laughs> you know the, the uh, stop, stop yeah. happening. That look of well. <laughs> and you know, honest, uh, like, and honestly, we, I've after the Kickstarter success, I've had a lot of people. You know, a lot of imi- imitators try to rip us off and yeah, whatnot. Right. But uh, I mean, that's just. I guess uh, imitation is the best. You know, flatter. Or the <laughs> best compliment, right? I, yeah, um, let me ask you a question about that, though, because one of my big things that I, when I talk to inventors is, you know, they always say, well, I have it patented. And my response is always, and if you listen to a few of my roundtables, you'll hear me say this over and over because it always comes up, but I, it's my soapbox, is um, that's great. You, you should patent, you should protect your IP, but you really need to make your business defendable because those imitators are always going to come up. So oh, yeah. I'm curious when you think about Keysmart, what – what are you doing that's harder for them to copy? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's harder so, for them to copy. Oh yeah, it is all patentable, and actually, there are most and almost all of them are actually infringing on the patents. Yeah, but it gets to a point where you know, where, like, what do you want to spend your time on? Do you want to spend so these important. little? These little people are they're they're just looking for a quick cash grab, not to make a business out of it. And you know, I once they pass that line. Um, you know, we definitely do the cease and desist and pursue it legally, but it's, um, I like to think I like to spend my time getting more out there, not trying to stop someone from making a dozen of them. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but once it, once they start, you know, uh, getting traction, we definitely pursue them legally. Um, but no, you're right. Uh, you know, it's always important to have patents, but at the end, it doesn't matter if you have pants or it, there will always be right, someone right. to try to rip you off. That's right. That's right. So, That's, I love what you're saying. I think it's powerful advice of focus on being strong out there in the marketplace, not just going after the ones imitating you because right. it's, you know, it's and, a game. And we, yeah, I know. And we, we sell more in a day than they will for five years. That's right. You know? See, so, bam, take that, imitator. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, that, and that's why it's really important to be first to market. And that's yeah. why it's important to, to actually invent it, not – to look at other people and try to rip off their ideas, right? So talk more about that. Why is it so important to be first to market? 
you, you get all the reputation. And everyone, you know, and everyone that looks at anything similar, and you can see it on social media, they'll always, you know, name drop. They'll be like, oh, that looks like, you know, a KeySmart ripoff or yeah, yeah. something like that. Um, and it's and it's important to have the first ones in people's hands, mm-hmm. you know, to get all those early adopters. Because you only have one round of early adopters. and Right. right? So they're going to, you want them to get your product, not... Right. And once once your product's in their hands, the early adopters are not gonna, and they're the ones that are gonna rep your product the hardest. You know, they're the ones that are gonna tell their friends about it. They're the ones that are gonna talk about it at parties and you know show it you know show it around. Whereas sometimes other people, sometimes you know a lot of people buy stuff and they just let it sit in a drawer. You know. Yeah, well, you know, there's there's early adopt. You said it. Yeah, yes, yes, and yes. And there's early adopters, and then there's the mainstream who just. They want the functionality once it's proven out there in the marketplace, but the right. early adopters are the ones that want the inventor's version, and they want the story, and they want to be able to get it out there, but that doesn't happen with the imitators. That happens with oh, right. with the first first to market, so I think you're absolutely right. So let's, mm-hmm. I want to dig into, um, you've, one of the things that you've done a really good job of, I think, is getting into various, at least online retailers. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you got onto the Shook, you got on, I think you're on Touch of Modern, is that right? Mm-hmm. And Correct. Gromit. Um how do you, how did you do that? I think for a lot of inventors, uh, you know, they think that the big part is actually birthing the product, and it is. But everything really starts after that point. Yeah, it's um, yeah, and I so I advise I actually advise on a lot of uh, companies um, based around inventions and more you know tangible products. And I always warn them, I'm, I'm like, don't have you know the designer's curse where it's yeah. like you think you make one product and it's great. And then you just don't apply the bu- your the business skills behind it to get it out there, you know. <laughs> Amen. It, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think um, who was it? I think it was um, I think it was on Shark Tank. I forgot where I, I forgot where I heard. It. I think it was uh, Damon John that said it is uh, the cool kid syndrome, mm-hmm. where it's you you only want to sell your product and that's it. Like you don't think that anyone anyone else can sell it as as good as you because they don't understand it. No, and, but you really need, it's really important to have those, um, those wholesalers that will wrap it for you as well, because they already have their big customer base. They're not starting from scratch. And that's how we've grown so big so fast is, you know, partnering up with some very reputable, um, you know, dealers that will move your products for you right, as well. Right. Because the more, on, my, my theory is the more in people's hands, the stronger your referral business is, the stronger okay. your, your website's going to be. And that's that. Well, and it it takes a village, I think. It really does. Oh yeah, absolutely. You, know? you can't you can, and so many designers think that they can do it all and all they, all they need to do is make a great product, make a website and then that's it's right. just it's just going to blow up by itself, but it doesn't. There's right. a lot of work. The inventor of zero <laughs> shoes, Stephen mm-hmm. Fashion said to me, the whole if you build it they will come, it's it's done. It's over. Uh, so yeah. now <laughs> it's if you build it they won't come, no yeah. matter how <laughs> awesome your website is. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they still have to find you. Mm-hmm. Unless you're planning on doing like a corner store in the middle of Times Square, like they will not find you. <laughs> I, no, it doesn't happen. And you know, it's I, I I appreciate what you're saying. And part of it is, um, sorry, I'm pulling my questions back up. Part part of it is, you know, there's so much energy that goes into creating your product, mm-hmm. but you got to pace yourself a little bit because there's a lot more that comes. Oh my god, there's so much. Yeah. What, you know? what, what, what were some of your sticking points when you think about actually kind of taking? Transitioning from pro- being a product person, someone who created something, to being the owner of a business. So i <laughs> i have a I have a library of probably fifty books in my apartment, just trying to because I'm I'm from I'm a uh, engineering background. You know, I design r- robotics and manufacturing systems, and I don't have any official background in marketing or accounting or. It's a lot of fast learning, so definitely don't underestimate it and just read everything. You know. Do you have a favorite um, book? Oh God, um, <laughs> on which subject? Uh, it's so hard to narrow it down. There's so many good ones, right? Yeah, my Kindle's actually gets is, is a little slow right now because there's so many books on it. But <laughs> um, yeah, there's so many. It depends on it depends on the topic, I guess. Um, but no, there's just, there's just so many um, facets to running a business that yeah. just don't don't take it for granted. There's a lot, and you Keep need learning. to learn it all. Keep learning. Yeah, especially once, especially when you get employees, like you have, you know, you have an obligation to stay on top of well, everything. Then then you start to sweat at night. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. 
like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, there, there's it's... a big transition that happens, and it sounds like you've done this really well, which is not just being someone who's launched a product, that's great, but also being someone who's running, um, who's treating their product like a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's and it's a shame. Um, it's, I, I always reference Kickstarter because there's such there's so many like phenomenal designers there, yeah. and they do these great great campaigns, raise a bunch of money, and then it's just they just fizzle, you know. Yeah, they set yeah. up like they set up a you know a little Shopify site, and like that's it. They don't. I mean, I to me, if I stopped there, we would be. You know, I think that would be five percent of the timeline that we've come to to like where we're at right now. You know, the Kickstarter was just like the first, you know, five percent of the life of it, right? And we're still like, I still don't see the, you know, the finish line. It's just there's so much opportunity out there. Yeah, well, it, the truth is, it never ends. On one hand, which is good, exciting if you're an entrepreneur, and mm -hmm. scary at the same time. Oh, yeah. I want to go back to your product for a minute because uh, you, you kind of said something a little bit earlier uh, and that KeySmart, you know, it kind of solves this problem of bulky keys and that jingle jangle and, you know, mm -hmm. I've got like, I'm like a janitor. I have so many keys. I don't know where they all even came mm -hmm. from. Frankly, I don't even know what half of them are to anymore. <laughs> but I didn't really realize I had that problem until you pointed it out to me. You know, mm -hmm. it was kind of an annoyance I lived with. Right. So I'm mm -hmm. curious, just your perspective on launching a product where you you are solving a problem, but it's not one that the minute I sit down, I go, oh my god, why? You know, it wasn't until you said something that mm -hmm. I went, oh yeah, that is really annoying. And mm -hmm. you're right, like I can't put it in my pocket because I'm wearing a dress. So what do I, you know? Oh my god. Yeah. So I, I I just would love to hear your perspective on launching, like I said, launching a product where the problem is there, but maybe not the top of mind. Okay, so how do you how, are you asking like how do you get that point across? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, what you said, sure. So <laughs> that and that goes back in the um, you know the marketing side of things. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, I've done a lot of tests on our videos and you know what was um, if you're familiar with like what a tipping point is, yeah. it's like what what tips that customer from like eh, interested to like oh I need that. And there's a lot of um a lot of emotions that you need to like trigger in your videos. So and I've I've always asked people what was that what like what sold you on the video? And it was always the part of the video where I sit down and I you know ah and you know take my keys out of my pocket and put it on the counter. It's just like oh my god you know I have that right. I I That's hate totally that me. Yeah, and it's just like I hate that part of the day. So that's what usually sells it. Um. But a lot of it's in the copy, and it's really, you know, it's really figuring out who your customer is and what they want, and how do you say it in the least amount of words or time, right? Well, you've got one picture that we used on the shoe. I know that had in one hand was the bulky keys, and in one right. hand was key smart, and that to me said it all. And I think mm -hmm. the advice I would take away if I was listening to this is show show the problem. And be mm -hmm. blunt about the problem, and to your mm -hmm. point, in a very simple way, you can't spend two minutes explaining the problem, no. and then show the solution. When I saw those two things side by side, I went, of course. Mm -hmm. I do need KeySmart. Right. <laughs> Everyone needs KeySmart. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> um, no, yeah, and it, I can't emphasize, like, because you really only have milliseconds to voice your solution to someone, so how can you do it as fast as possible? Yeah, you know, yeah. in under three words... Um, under a few seconds in a video, one quick picture, no, a lot of people, um, you know, it's like a PowerPoint. If you ever sat through a boring PowerPoint, yeah, that's yeah. all, that, that's all bullet points, you know, like no one reads bullet points. You need no. really quick, just a few images, less is more going back to the minimalist, <laughs> minimalist design and just really, um, really hammer it in just with one shot. So I want to dig into that whole minimalist, um, design thing. So mm -hmm. Some of the feedback that we got on the shoot was that they loved it. So first of all, I think you um, you had you made it stick in their minds that this was about a minimalist design. So you know, kudos to your marketing. So I know that was important to you in getting the key smart out. Mm -hmm. But talk to us a little bit about why that your your particular personal focus on minimalist. Oh, I'm I'm minimalist to like the the highest degree in my personal okay, life. Did so, you really? How yeah, so? I I can't I. <laughs> If you saw my apartment, you'd understand. So it's everything's just um, less is more. Anything not functional, I get rid of. You know, if it's 
whether it's uh, most people have, you know, a closet full of clothes, and, but you only really wear, what, 10% of them, you know? Maybe. A lot. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. So, so don't honestly, keep me from buying I, my clothes, sure. <laughs> so, I, like, if I don't have, if I don't wear something in three weeks, like, I just get rid of wow. it. Donate it, whatever. Yeah. Because um, it's just it's just clutter, and I, I can't stand clutter. So I'm very, um, and I can't think of a guy's name. Um Anyway, so I'm, but I'm very influenced with uh, like Mac products and you know just yeah, very yeah. simple, intuitive, something that doesn't need instructions. That's what I really love about it. Um, and yeah, just go along the lines of less is more you know, with everything. The people listening can't see because this is an audio podcast. But you're you know you're kind of in your warehouse, which also looks very tidy and amazingly organized. So clearly. Mm-hmm. It must be how you think and put things together. Because yep. if that were my office, it would be a disaster. Uh, <laughs> I love it. No, are yeah, you? Uh, I'm, yeah. See, like, look how minimalist that is. Uh, I love it. It's very, very organized. Yeah, it's incredibly organized. <laughs> if that, if I were in your shoes, it would not. Would not oh no. <laughs> Organization's not my strong point. Right. Um. You know. So you've got KeySmart. Are you? Take a couple minutes and talk to us about kind of what's next for you with products, and then I want to dig into kind of some of the feedback you got. Sure. Um, so, KeySmart is it's just growing so big so fast that it's I really I don't want to um, starve it of any resources, so I definitely want to give it my full attention. But as an inventor, you just you can't help from but thinking of stuff, right? Um, so I'm definitely you know I definitely spend a lot of time uh, time you know outside outside of office hours with all my with all my people you know at night just. Playing around with 3D printers, just creating everything new. But um, so the next step on the line is I really, I really want to create a nice uh, minimalist wallet, even though it has been done so much. But there's there's a few aspects that no that other people haven't thought of yet that I I think I'm really gonna yeah that I think I'm really gonna have a good execution of. Um, what else? Uh, wallet. There's some other things that are on the on the drawing board, but that's pretty much it for I'll now. I'll take a minimalist umbrella if you can do that. As I was walking down okay. rain today. Okay. Um, and I would uh, encourage our listeners out there because we've got a minimalist designer here to submit to KeySmart uh, what they want to see in a minimalist design. Maybe one of the customers, will, maybe one of our shukers will tell you absolutely what they would, want as a minimalist. Yep. <laughs> that'd be I'd be awesome. happy, happy to happy to talk to them about it. Yeah, that'd be great. Or, so, or launch something, you know. Yeah, hey, you, well, you know, to your point earlier about you were constantly getting feedback. I think that's so important. Is you know that's the whole premise of the shoot is being a testing ground, so that you know, will people pay for it? Will they engage with it? Will they use it? Will they? What do they think about it? Um, mm-hmm. So that you can continue to improve and iterate and and get to that place where it's just right. Um, mm-hmm. But that doesn't happen the first time you launch, as you know. I mean, it's it's kind of it's a process that keeps going. But, you know, our customers have the best ideas. They often solve our problems for us if we just ask them. Right. So, all right, so let's get to the feedback, speaking of that. And it's still coming in, so you never know. We'll have to check back and see what else people say. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people, as I think I said earlier, they loved um, the minimalist design. Um, Mm -hmm. They loved how simple it was to use. And Mm -hmm. one of the, the pieces of feedback that I found kind of interesting was, can you put instructions on the package? And I don't have the package in front of me. In fact, I think I got rid of mine once I opened it up and kind of used it. But um, I'm just curious. And the the reason I ask you about that is I find that, you know, it is it is like a Mac. So intuitive. Mm -hmm. Um, Yet, you know, there's a lesson there, which is when you're not on the website or in front of a video or on a short store shelf or maybe you've got some extra display, you've got to kind of communicate everything in your package. Mm -hmm. Right. So... Uh, I guess a two-step answer to that. One, or originally we have the um, we have the insert card with the video, mm-hmm. so we you know the call to action is to always you know get the people video, in front of can get people on, yeah watch the video just because it's a video can say so much more than um, you know some wireframes and because it's I feel like that would actually kind of confuse people because mm-hmm. there's just different ways to set it up you know it's to your preference um, and then the two, second part mm-hmm. answer would be I like, guess we are gonna move to a, because we're rolling out to brick and mortars, so um, we, we spent the last year doing online retail, and we have a special you know e-commerce uh, packaging, so it's the, the thick uh, clear bags with the card insert, and it's just, that makes it a lot easier for shipping, and there's less waste, waste going the whole green route, and, but, you know, for the, uh, for a big, you know, a retailer, for to them to display it, and for the customer to be sold, you know, 
in an instant, you definitely need a very pretty packaging. In an so instant. that's the point exactly right. there. When you're on a shelf next to a thousand other things, mm -hmm. you have a well, moment. Exactly, but if you know if so, if a customer has purchased it online, they've already gotten the whole spiel of what it is, what it does, and they they're you know they're on board with it. So there's you know instead of making a bunch of waste and packaging you know stuff to throw out, we went with uh, the simple card insert. Yeah. So that, but that, that's a, I think that's an important lesson for inventors, which is you do actually you can you have the opportunity to think differently about your packaging online. Mm -hmm. Versus your packaging and brick and mortar, because you're right online, you have actually have more opportunity to create context mm -hmm. than you do in retail. Mm -hmm. and, and interestingly, the feedback that that was given for about instructions on on packaging was all people who bought it who gave it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very true. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. So yes, and then to answer, you know, to re-answer, it's yeah, we will be moving to a a, re, a more retail packaging with nice. Uh, it's called an overwrap thermoform with instruction manual, and it'll be nice. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see yeah. there, Shukers. People, you know, the feedback is listened to, and there you go. The change is right. coming. Of course. Um, what uh, What do you think about the journey that you've been on and where you are in your business? Uh, what other pieces of lessons or advice do you have for others out there trying to trying to make it happen? Um, don't. Don't strive for perfection before launch because it's just not possible. You're gonna have that, would, and that's why I can't I can't emphasize this enough. If you have an idea, do a Kickstarter on it. It's no risk. You get to prove your market without spending like a whole ton of money trying to you know manufacture it beforehand. And I learned so many things from uh, the Kickstarter community on what. The market wants because yeah. I, I designed it for me. I wasn't actually. Well, you got to start somewhere. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they're going to critique the hell out of you. They're not. They're not quiet people. <laughs> so whether you want it or not, they're going to do it. Right. Um, Especially if you ask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and honestly, a lot of the different, uh, you know, what what I made it to be and to what it uh, ended up being, you know, the Kickstarter people have influenced a ton of my, a ton of the design changes and. Just to make it universal and really acceptable, or really fulfill everyone's needs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, to reiterate, um, you know, if I spent all my time, if I spent two years trying to perfect every single possible aspect of it, in you know, it would it would never get like I would never pull the trigger. So honestly, just uh, in a nutshell, you know, just pull the trigger, launch it, and because new revisions are going to be inevitable. You are so speaking my language. I 100% I agree with you. And frankly, I find the ones that try to perfect it in the mm -hmm. conference room or, you know, kind of in their heads never get to market because yeah. it's never perfect. Yeah. Um, and I think it was the founder of LinkedIn. I might be getting this wrong. I Like you, I read so much that I can't keep mm -hmm. like who says what in my head. Well, right? I know but, the story going to say right now. <laughs> right. So it's like it, well, my, my fallback is, as Ben Franklin once said, just because, yeah. you know, I can never remember. I think this one was the founder of LinkedIn said, if you're not embarrassed by your first product to market your first iteration, then you're moving too slowly. You're too late. Yep. Something yep. like that. So yep. I 100% agree with that. That is such yep. important and great advice to entrepreneurs out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to ask everybody, what's one thing that our audience would be just really kind of surprised to know about you as a person? <laughs> so uh, as much as I'm a perfectionist, I'm also um, definitely a uh, Daredevil, I guess. So I'm actually a full time skydiver and <laughs> world traveler. So I jump and I yeah, I jump off cliffs and stuff and all sorts oh of God, I love it. Yep. So what's your favorite place? Do you have a favorite place to do that? Um my favorite place was all right, so I actually just got back three days ago. Um and I was out in so I work mobily. I actually mm -hmm. travel the world full time. Um yeah. So uh so I just got back from Puerto Vallarta. And I took uh, two of my cousins on their first on their first skydive. Oh, that's oh. awesome! Mm -hmm. And it was right over it was right over the beach and all the buildings and it wow. was a blast. It was a beautiful scene. I've always wanted to go. I might have to uh, hitch a ride next time. You gotta go. Um, I tried to get my dad to do it with me, but he was in the Israeli army, so he said to me tomorrow, "I used to jump out of planes into enemy lines. Why would I pay somebody to do that? Like, I don't <laughs> want to do it." <laughs> to watch me do it. Yeah. <laughs> So I actually I gotta back up and ask you some questions about being a world traveler and running a business because I think the new um, 
expectation is that for entrepreneurs and I'm all for it is that you can have your cake and eat it too, that there's no reason why you have to sacrifice. And I, by the way, a hundred percent buy into that. I have a, you know, I have a big business, but it's also very lifestyle driven for me. Right. So I, I'm just, I'd love to get your perspective on that because I wasn't expecting it. Um, mm -hmm. But how do you world travel and run a business? And what do you do to make sure that, that you do that successfully? So yes, you absolutely can have your cake and eat it too. You just have to sacrifice some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, and that's, that, that's usually the trade off. But, um, you know, it's, uh, there's, I mean, the internet's just so crazy right now. You can have everything, I mean, between Dropbox and, you know, Skype and join me and, uh, all my inventory, it's all, it's all mobile. And, you know, I've got some great employees that work with me and, the, and they're very, uh, that's also very huge is having self-managed employees, someone that you don't have to look over the shoulders with. That's extraordinarily important. Um, and that you trust, yeah. but it's, uh, you know, you definitely have to work. It's, uh, your efficiencies aren't going to be as great. So if I wanted, you know, I'm actually in my office right now, but if I'm here every single day, I'm going to get a lot more done. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, you know, playing, try to connect to the Starbucks Wi-Fi for, you know, a half hour. It's not going to, not going to be as, uh, efficient, but it's a trade off. I think you should re always structure your business around your lifestyle. Most yeah. importantly, re I mean, that's more important than any kind of financial a advantage or whatnot, because that's, you know, you got to be the happy you are with it, the better you're going to do. I also think that, um, you burn out if you don't. Oh yeah. Or the reward even comes because it is a long haul at the end of the day. Oh yeah. You know, there's no such thing as a, I got asked in an interview recently, how do I feel about having my business be an overnight success? And I said, well, a lot of coffee and 20 years later, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> it's not exactly. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. You have, yeah. I, I'm in the same boat. I, I can't tell you how many people are like, Oh, I can't, you know, I wish I invented a keychain. I'm like, no, it's not that easy. Right, you know? <laughs> right. right. I mean, no. it's, it's, it's wonderful and it's exciting, but it's work. Mm -hmm. Um, right. but I, okay. I I think it's great what you're saying. And do you have any other, you mentioned Dropbox. Um, do you have any other apps or tools or technology that you rely on that you think helps you balance those two out? So, uh, Dropbox is huge. I use, uh, Shopify as a backend to all my, uh, to my websites and whatnot. Um, they have a really good inventory tracking, uh, a com if you have obviously tangibles, you, um, ShipStation is great because you have nice dashboards for all your shipping and it's all integrated and it just wires through your credit card and bank accounts. Um, I'm very, you know, I'm very adamant about streamlining everything. Um, down to like QuickBooks and my accountants. Uh, I try to automate absolutely everything because the, the administrative part, I don't like that. that yeah. I think that's boring. But, well, and you know, and you know the, the, I think there's a second, second lesson to that, which is it's very, actually very hard to scale when you're not automated. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, because you're trading dollars for time. And at the end of the day, you might be selling a product for wholesale and then they're selling at retail, but then you've got to include all the time that goes into that. So oh, God, your yeah. margins get severely squeezed if you're not automating. Mm -hmm. And then the time you're spending on that, you could, you know, you could have been getting a, a big customer. Right. Or skydiving. Exactly, exactly. Or doing both at the same time. Uh huh. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Well, we're going to put a link um, at the bottom in the description or in the notes about where to get Key Smart. Mm -hmm. So that when you're listening to this, and if you hadn't bought it already, you're thinking, oh my God, I need to have one because you do. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. I mm -hmm. actually have two. I think I told people on our site. I have one for my everyday stuff, and then we have a second home in Lake Tahoe. And, uh, you know, like the, all the stuff that goes along with that. So then I've got my specific Lake mm -hmm. Tahoe one. Oh yeah. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Did you get um, any of the, the quick disconnects? What's that? Did you get the quick disconnects? Did I get the qu I don't think so. Uh -uh. Oh, that's good if you're changing out key smarts oh. or, or like, or you have like a valet or, you know, a vacation house that you, you know, take off and on often. Oh yeah. No, I, well, I keep it on there because I keep it out mostly because I love Lake Tahoe and I want to go there every chance I can get. <laughs> so I just leave it there as a reminder of like, I need to pick up those keys cause I need to get mm -hmm. there. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I oh, do absolutely. want to have my cake and eat it. Yeah, who um, does? Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us for Innovation Roundtable. That was a, a wealth of great advice, and it's so fun to see and hear what you're up to and the success of KeySmart. And we were just thrilled to be, you know, along for the ride at some point. Absolutely. Thank yeah. Thank you very much for having me. I look forward to all the all the feedback that you guys got. 
Thanks for hanging out with us inside Launch Street. When you're ready to take your game to the next level, join the thousands of others that are upping their innovation edge on GoToLaunchStreet.com, the top online education resource and community platform for innovators looking to use innovation to get measurable results. Go to LaunchStreet.com.